Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, thanks for coming to my channel. I appreciate it. Uh, it helps my channel get promoted if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button. And uh, I'd love it if you'd leave a comment. That helps as well, too. So uh, thanks in advance for that. Um, I'm going to do a themed piece today uh, for uh, my Patreon, uh, which is my premium content that people pay for over on Patreon. Every month I give them a, a jewelry theme to create a piece based on, and this month's was uh, childhood toys. And so um, I thought, I, I, I looked for a number of different ideas, I thought about some various toys that I had, but I finally settled on doing a bicycle. Um, so I'm going to make a bike pendant, and we'll see how that come out. comes out. I'm going to try and use uh, some brass for the tires. I'm also going to um, make the wheels turn. So uh, I, I don't think uh, I want to make it so that the handlebars turn and everything. I'm going to have to make it sort of uh, two-dimensional uh, in order for it to be a pendant that lays nicely on someone's um, sternum here. So we'll give it a shot. Uh, before we do that, though, I wanted to thank my YouTube subscribers. We're approaching 5,000. Uh, you guys rock. I think you're awesome, and I really appreciate all of the support and the kind words you guys have uh, sent my way. I also wanted to thank those people on Patreon who are paying for my monthly uh, uh, premium content. And uh, I've met a lot of really nice people over there. There's a lot of talent over there, and it's nice to see them sharing ideas with each other and uh, resources and things like that. It's uh, become a very nice community. So uh, thanks, you guys. I'm enjoying the, the interactions with you guys over there. So if you're interested in any of the things like uh, Patreon, or if you wanted to check out my merch store, or my website, or if you just wanted to help support the channel by buying me a coffee, uh, all of those links are in the video description down below, and I really appreciate those kinds of things because it makes it possible for me to buy supplies and stuff. So, uh, thanks for that, uh, but let's get started on this project. <clears throat> so I've never made a bicycle before out of silver and brass, so it'll be an interesting try. This is my design idea book that I've started using in recent times. Uh, it's available in my merch store. What I like about it is uh, sketching out designs in advance is something I didn't used to do, but now I've started to. And it's really improved my process, I think. Um, so, the thing I like about it is the little um, graph paper is graph paper, but it doesn't have the lines, so it doesn't interfere with your drawing. You can still get the proportions and stuff using those, but it kind of uh, doesn't interfere with your ideas. So this is some toy ideas I had. I was thinking about it, it might be kind of fun to make one of these uh, little ball cup things. Uh, I used to have uh, those when I was a kid where you'd have a ball on a rope and you'd try and sling it up in the air and catch it in the cup. Um, I like to play darts, so I thought maybe a little dart board of some sort. Uh, I was just looking through retro toys uh, online and there's a lot of them that brought back memories. Uh, Gumby, of course. <laughs> uh, Legos, I was a, Legos were a big favorite of mine when I was a kid because you could build so many cool things with them. So, But I don't know if that would make a very exciting pendant. I don't know. Uh, little blocks from your little kid. Uh, well, the one that jumped out at me that was kind of funny was uh, I didn't even, I, I wouldn't have remembered that I had this when I was a kid because I must have been super young. But uh, it was uh, a cootie game, a cootie bug game, and you had to build this little cootie bug out of plastic parts. And uh, when I saw the picture, that I, it immediately gave me a, a flashback to my childhood, and I remember having that. Uh, but I wouldn't have been able to remember that without seeing that picture, probably. So I thought about doing a cootie bug. Uh, that was kind of funny. But I think, um, technically, I think a bicycle will be more fun for me. So I'm going to do a bicycle. I don't know how I'm going to hang it from a chain yet. But I do know what I'm going to do basically. So this is kind of the rough sketch of it. For the tires, I'm going to use brass. Uh, I have this brass rod here. It's pretty thick, so I'm going to have to use a trick to bend it into a circle. But I'm going to use that for the tires. And I'll just use some 18 gauge silver wire for the spokes. I think I have this uh, this tube here, this silver tube, and I'm going to use that for the, the central uh, point on the tires, 
or the wheels, I should say, and then I'll be able to run a piece. This is the kind of tubing that 14 gauge fits right in. So uh, I'll use some 14 gauge for the actual axle. For the forks, I think I'm just going to use two pieces of 14 gauge round wire, as well as the handlebars in the frame. Um, I'm not sure about the seat yet. I was going to make this, put a tube here and have this swivel, but I think that's pushing my limits here on this one. I don't think I need to make it that complicated. And I'm not going to probably make this turn. But I want the wheels to turn at least. So The other thing I thought about was uh, for the handlebars, if I was going to have three dimensional handlebars, it's going to be impossible to wear. Uh, so we're going to have to do kind of a one-sided view of the handlebars here. So it's, it's basically a two dimensional thing except for where the uh, wheels are concerned because I want to have them inside of some forks so that you can actually spin them. So it'll be a little bit three-dimensional but mostly two-dimensional <laughs> if that makes any sense. In order to make these tires um, I don't have a bending jig um, but I do have this disc cutter and when I looked at some of the sizes of these things these little pegs for the cutting discs. This thick wire, if I wrap it around here, is going to come out being pretty close to what I want it to be. And so I was going to do that. There's the right one. Okay. So the reason I have this other one here is so that I can have some leverage on it to get it to, to bend because brass wire is really pretty. This is more like brass rod, I would call it. Is pretty thick, hard to bend. So, in order to get it all the way around, though, I need to have this pulling that, but I need to be able to keep bending this above. So I need to kind of go like that. Going around twice since I need two tires. That's pretty good. I think I can probably get those to be relatively round from that. So I'm going to cut those off with a saw real quick, but since we're doing kind of a big project, I'm not going to make you watch me saw, so I'll be right back. I want to make these into perfect circles or at least as close as I can get them. This stuff is pretty hard to bend, so I'm going to use two pairs of these flat nose pliers so I can get a grip on it. Alright, if you've never been to my channel before, I use primarily hard silver sheet solder. Where I put it? And I use a spray-on flux called Mighty Flux. Just in a spray bottle like that. Central point is going to be uh, this uh, tube that fits 14 gauge wire perfectly. I'll, like I said, I'll put in the description what the exact uh, measurements are for the tube. Uh, but I have a couple of pieces I cut so I'm thinking uh, if we cut some 18 gauge spokes I don't know if I want to do like more than like six maybe even maybe even four I don't know uh, but before we do that let's make sure these are really round it'd be nice because I want these spokes to solder into kind of the center of the tubes here um, and in order to do that I want to uh, maybe push the tube into a softer surface all right let's find some 18 gauge I'm going to cut these longer than they need to be because we're going to trim them down to get them as close to the center as we can there Thinking is just 
pick a little bit onto the end of each of these so there's already a little bit of solder in place. We're going to get these guys a little more 30 degree angles here. It's 30, isn't it? It's probably good enough. So what we're going to have to do is find the center of that. Pretty close. For that purpose. Find the center of this circle. I made a square that's just about the same. If I line up the uh, central point with the central point it should get us pretty close to having a, you know, it in the center so then I can kind of mark where I need to cut these guys off pretty good. Okay, I'm going to pick some of those little pieces of solder to the brass here to hold it all together. There's quite a bit of mass in the brass here compared to the silver, so mostly focus on the brass. <laughs> it's a little wonky, but it does turn. I can probably correct that some. <laughs> Hopefully, anyway. Then I'll have to cut this off shorter on this side a little bit. I think, you know, with a little corrective straining here, I may have to tap that on the, on the 
anvil to get it to flatten out a little bit, but I think overall that came out pretty good. So I'm going to make the second one, and then, uh, and then we'll come back and we'll make the frame. Okay, I was thinking about some things while I was pickling these wheels for a little bit. And um, since these guys have to split so it can go around this wheel, I think I'm going to cut this off right about where the pedals are going to go and solder these together. should have something more workable there but I need to have some uh, another V coming off the other side so we need to make another V and then solder it on this side I just really want to solder that there and that there without really soldering anything hopefully but if I have to I can always cut through that again starting to look like a bicycle. How about that? Okay, so I do need a piece of 14 gauge that goes to either side of this. I think I want to narrow this down further. solder on either side of this one and see if we can't solder it in between there and then later when we go to put the wheel on we'll um, we'll saw it and then we'll slide it on there and then we'll re-solder it hopefully Theoretically, I have enough pressure that I'm pushing in enough solder on either side where it should just put together once I reach a soldering temperature. We'll see. Uh, 
a look at our drawing again. Okay. Okay. Created some some structure here like that. Should be angled a little more that way. Do I dare to try and do that though is the question. <laughs> Could just slightly alter it a little bit like that. Let me solder on these guys going like that. This front one, I'm going to just make an arch shape and I'm actually going to solder some handlebars right to this. And then we'll solder the arch shape to the bottom of that. So let's do that. That to be in there pretty good, about like there, maybe. I want too much extra space between the top of the forks and my wheel, so mark him right there. Okay, that's where we'll solder that guy. Change the position of the microphone a little bit try and pick up my mumbles a little better. <laughs> Somebody mentioned that today in the comments. So I keep trying to make good sound on these. And I think I have it, and then somebody says it's not good, so... We'll keep trying different strategies. We'll see if this one works any better. So let me know in the comments if, if the sound's okay on this one or not. So the top fork needs to go all the way from there and then turn into a handlebar. So I think I'm going to make that a little bit longer. shape the handlebars. I was thinking to make that little handle for the handlebars, uh, I could just wrap, take some of the tube that this fits right into cut a little piece of that and use that as the hand grip. I think that might work. Let's see if we can do that. Now, I'm not doing a banana seat, I'm doing one of just a traditional bike seat kind of thing. So, I really just kind of need a piece of sheet. I'm 
I'll just draw it kind of a, a little seat there. Jeez. I'm a little clumsy today. Shouldn't be playing with fire probably. <laughs> Saw a uh, rough shape like that. I'll be right back. Did a couple of things off camera. I, I just sawed this out because it wasn't anything fancy. Uh, it's just kind of a generic seat shape. I soldered on a little uh, piece of 18 around this, piece of 18 around there, just to give it a little kind of distinction. I think next I'm going to solder this seat. To the seat post. Okay, so I'm going to saw through right here. So I'll do this side as well since since we're doing it on that that side. <clears throat> Okay, so now I should be able to bend this out. I realized I forgot to do the um, the pedal and the, call that, the gears. Hmm, pushing something hot over here. <laughs> I'm just going to pick up a little solder on the end of this piece of 14 gauge wire here. I already made the pedal, but this is the back side of it. I punched out a little disc, a piece of 14 gauge wire for the crank. Just a little piece of 18 gauge uh, sheet that was laying around that I cut down for a little pedal. So I put that on the back so that I would have some way to attach it in here. Because it needs to stick up a little bit above this right here. So I just solder it under I think I'm gonna solder it underneath. couple of things left to do. I think I'm going to make the seat a little bit thicker with a piece of half round wire. Let's see if I actually got that hot enough for that to stick. I think I did. I think for the bale I'm going to put uh, a silver tube on the back just for the chain to go through.
use the file and the Dremel to make this seat a little more uh, the way I want it to look. I'll be right back. So this is one of the few times I'm going to use easy solder. Uh, I've got, you know, multiple, multiple solder joints here. So I'm going to try and just easy solder this last little bit so I don't accidentally uh, solder the wheel to, this, to the uh, axle. So I'm going to dribble a little on the table here, a little flux. Grab the toothpick. I've cut a few pieces of easy solder over here. So I'm going to dab a little bit of All right, here goes nothing. I wonder what the origin of that expression is. Here goes nothing. This one I did not get. I'll try it one more time. Okay. I'm going to heat this whole thing and let it pickle for a while. Then I'll polish it up. There's my bicycle. The wheels turn. You can see <laughs> I didn't quite get it in the center on the on the rear wheel, but pretty close on the front one. So uh, I'll put that on a chain and I'll you know take some better pictures and call it a day. So that was a fun one. I wasn't quite sure whether I'd be able to pull that off, but I, I'm pleased with the result. So all right. Thanks for watching. All right, well, that was the bicycle pendant. Uh, I think that was an interesting project. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, make sure to hit the like button before you leave today. That helps me out a great deal. And, uh, you know, don't forget to visit the video description down below. Uh, there's lots of uh, important links that are relevant to my channel. Uh, check those out, follow them, buy some jewelry, buy some merch, leave a comment, do all those things. Uh, but come back and watch some more videos and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Take care. Happy silversmithing.